Greetings and welcome. Thank you so much for joining Ar Kelly Appeal TV. Today we have an exciting um, conversation for you. It involves an interview from 2002 from CBS. I think this is very vital to how the concepts of everything went down that created the case in 2008 and the case in 2021 that revealed um, a lot of convictions that created chaos for the R&B king, Robert Sylvester Kelly. So let's get started with some information and then we'll blend it in with conversation. Here we go. Wednesday, a shocking development. Police arrested a popular singer on child pornography charges. NBC's Jim Avila has the details. But first I know it stops the hottest rhythm and blues singer in America, R. Kelly, the man Vibe magazine called the new millennium Marvin Gaye, now in handcuffs, arrested in Florida and charged in Chicago with 21 heinous sex crimes against an underage girl. The key evidence, say police, a videotape made by the singer himself. The FBI forensic. So R. Kelly supposedly made a tape that involved something illegal. And it's amazing how he was coming up in this arena, struggling, you know, trying to get into the door of the music industry where he was denied a lot of doors. And a lot of doors closed on him. So why would he create a video that would incriminate him? So when we fast forward to 2021, we hear in 2019, a video of, I admit, saying that he was set up. What are your views? The FBI forensics experts from Quantico have closely examined the tape. They tell us it's authentic. Police say the 40-minute tape, which first surfaced five months ago, was recorded inside Kelly's house on this Chicago street. He has since moved to this suburban mansion. So now you see how things elevated itself and balanced itself as it was going down. So now the tape comes out with an underage girl and then he moves. So when he moves, is it because someone had given him another opportunity? Are the people playing chess with R. Kelly's life, moving him around to depict and play out the scenario as they chose to do so for his life? The video already screened by the grand jury that returned a three-page indictment accusing Kelly of, among other things, soliciting, taping, and performing sexual acts with a 14-year-old. Kelly's attorney says it's not him on the video, and the girl in question will back him up. This charge, in fact, and through this case, cannot be proven. Kelly is best known for two up. Now, his attorney at this time was Ed Jensen. So he's saying it could not be proven. And that's why it took to go to trial in 2008 and then turn around and be exonerated of all charges. So do you see the setup here? He said he was set up. And so that's why I pulled this, this video out of an archive and I'm trying to make sense of it all, you know. R&B anthem, I Believe I Can Fly, I believe I can fly. Oh, yeah. and World's Greatest, which Kelly sang at the Winter Olympics. Even then, Kelly was proclaiming innocence and blaming his enemies for setting him up. It, it upsets me really bad, you know what I'm saying? Because, first of all, I, I'm not aware of anything like that. And, and for people, unknown people, to make those um, statements against me, is, is, is ridiculous. After yesterday's arrest, Kelly released this statement, quote, I have complete faith in our system of justice, and I am confident that when all the facts come out, people will see that I'm no criminal. 
The tape was first made public by the Chicago Sun-Times, mm. which turned it over to authorities investigating complaints of teen sex against Kelly. Right, right, Music right. reporter Jim DeRogatis says he confirmed that it was Kelly on the tape by showing it to the 14-year-old's aunt. There goes the devil in the sauce. So Jim DeRogatis pushes and pushes and pushes something that does not come to fruition for him. You know, and R. Kelly said in the I Admit video or the song, the 19-minute song, he says that these people were trying to convict him of something that, you know, this man made a career out of 20 years, this Jim Dare goddess. He made a career out of stalking R. Kelly. So sad. One of the, the worst things I've ever had to do as a reporter is sit with this woman and say, look, I don't want to show you this, but we need to make sure this girl is who we think this girl is. Now a jury must decide if the man who sold 24 million records also made one videotape that could end his career. For today, Jim Avila, NBC News, Chicago. Dick Devine is Cook County State's attorney. Mr. Devine, good morning. Good morning, Ann. Mr. Kelly's attorney says that uh, your case cannot be proven, so how strong is your evidence? Hmm. Well, we don't bring charges unless we believe we have the basis for a case. And uh, That's a lie. They brought charges off of a videotape that never fostered the resemblance of either R. Kelly or if this girl was actually the 14-year-old that was on supposedly on the tape by the singer, uh, not Pebbles, Sparkle. So, wow, this is so weird. This is so weird. But they say they don't bring charges unless they feel that they have enough proof. Well, this, w this went down in history as not having proof. But do you see how it all compiles and just makes this thing a whirlwind for Robert? This is the result of a long investigation. The Chicago Police Department, our office, others were involved. Uh, and we filed the charges because we believe there is a solid basis in the evidence for the case. Well, Kelly denies he is the man on the tape. So what evidence do you have specifically that he is the man on the tape? Well, I can't go into too many specifics because this is still a matter that is to be tried. You can't go into specifics because if you had a guaranteed case, you would be bragging about it right now. Oh, we 100% are accurately sure we've sent in our photographers. We've done analysis on, you know, um, facial features and different things like that. We've seen a straight forward focused shot of the singer and you know they say we all have twins we all have a twin so hmm let's think people and that's what robert told us in the gail king interview people think hi but i can tell you that uh, that is obviously one of the things that you check out uh, as on your newspaper uh, on your recent report that you just did uh, the identity is one of the first things that you look at, and uh, I'm sure everyone can expect we spent some time doing that, especially after Mr. Kelly went on TV a couple of weeks ago and denied that it was him. Now, I understand that your investigators talked to some 50 people. Are, are these people people who could just simply identify Mr. Kelly by seeing the tape, or are there people who actually were involved with the making of the tape who are among the people you'll bring to trial? Well, again, I, I can't go into too many specifics, but uh, needless to say... That was a great question, wasn't it? 50 people saw this tape. So they were indulging in child pornography and they were passing the tapes around as well. 50 people? Wow. Among the 50 people uh, were a number that uh, knew R. Kelly very well uh, and can identify him uh, as well as the young lady on the tape. So we feel very confident in the identifications. That's not, a, that's not a, a major issue as far as we can tell. Speaking of the young lady, apparently the family, we're hearing the family of the, of the girl alleged to be in this video is going to not deny that it's her. That sounds like that's going to hurt your case. Mm -hmm. Well, you like the cooperation of everybody, but uh, we have to remember here what we're talking about is the protection of young children from uh, sexual predators. Uh, this very important that the community do that. We have the laws to do it and we're going to enforce them. 
Did you hear how he just stated that this singer was a sexual predator? No type of uh, um, charges were even, well, the charges were filed, but there were no convictions. There were no, you know, guilty, anything. He just threw it out there. He threw it out for social media to catch it. Uh, we have the evidence we believe in this case uh, and whether or not uh, particular individuals cooperate. We hope they'll cooperate, but if they don't, the case is still there. We've been told that uh, Kelly is, uh, has been the target of numerous. The case is still there. So it was sitting, waiting for something. What do you think that something was? That 2021 trial? That, that um, you know trial that he's facing right now after all these years he's facing it now in chicago coming up wow lawsuits or threatened lawsuits from women who allege that they were underage when he had sex with them did these prior allegations influence your decision to file these charges you know, you look at each case on its own merits that's what we did here we looked very closely and carefully at the evidence that related uh, to the videotape that is at the heart of this case. Uh, that was the focus. Obviously, uh, the investigation continues, and if other things surface where the evidence is there to support charges, uh, we'll do that as well. You said in a news conference Wednesday that you want this case, the filing of these charges, to send a message. Who do you want that message to be sent to, and why do you think it needs to be sent? Well, I think it's a message from the entire community. As I said before, we have a number of laws that are designed to protect the children of our communities. Uh, we have to enforce. So why didn't they enforce these same laws with all of the other people who have even went as far as marrying a, a um, underage individual, an underage girl or guy? I know in some states, the underage um, right to marriage with a parent parental consent is 14 for a guy you know, for a boy. So, wow. The, the message here is that if you are going to think about being involved with uh, young children and prey upon them, that the law is going to be there where the evidence is available, we're going to prosecute you and we're going to seek the harshest penalties. You know what, you're now. Where the evidence is available, not some video that no one were, no one was able to see not that I would want to see it anyway, but no one was able to see that it was actually him. I mean, 50 people can easily say yes, be prompted to say yes. Um, they didn't have to show the entire tape. They could have just showed the face of the person, just the face of R. Kelly, if that was him on the tape. And if it was him on the tape, 100% definitely, they would have done it. You know how many times they blocked out certain um, censored audio or video and the individual was still there on the tape? Weird. I'm seeking to extradite Kelly from Florida to Chicago. Dick Devine, thank you so right. much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Ann. So this was just eye-opening and I await your comments. I know that it was from 2002. But I feel that it was important to bring up this archived document to show and prove what is being stated. Um, Jim Derek Goddess, um, like he said, he's been trying to bring him down, making money off of a career of R. Kelly. And so we need to find out the loop of who, well, we already know when I started to read the boring book soulless um i couldn't even finish it but we also see who jim dare goddess really was you know um so now i have another clip that i want to share with you and it comes from the wall street journal and i think this has something to do with how the industry began to smother Robert all the way back then because they knew there was no light at the end of the tunnel because he wasn't going to get all of all that he was worth for the 30 years that he 
you know, um, serviced the entire community. Now, um, it's amazing because what if this case never happened? Daddy Lolo brought that up. What if this case never occurred? What would be happening in the industry right now with the lawsuit? How would they, how would they maneuver through that? Really great aspect there. So let's listen to the Wall Street Journal on streaming music. Here we go. What do you think about everything happening now with the streaming industry? You know, you started out in traditional sales mm -hmm. where you were sell you've sold over 100 million mm -hmm. records in mm -hmm. your career. And when your CD came out, everybody went to retail and they got that. And now there's a lot of piracy, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. more importantly, streaming with Apple Music and everything. Has that affected you in terms of royalties? Right now, the rates are about six tenths of a cent per stream for an artist is that a fair well, rate of compensation well honestly i look at it as a plague <laughs> a musical plague you know and um it didn't just uh go to everybody else's door it came to my door too and it and, and it affected as a me songwriter yeah as a songwriter and just a man just out here hustling man trying to eat and feed your kids you know so it has affected me uh greatly and uh, along with a lot of other artists i don't care how big you are i don't care how many records you've sold or who you are it, it has affected you so uh you know i can't wait for them to be able to how can is there anything that. that you can do to help change that yeah um as I, artists you know, you know, you said it right, artist. You know, if you put the S on it, and, it has, and you know, if if twelve big artists came together today and said we're not having it anymore, no different than a basketball team say we ain't gonna play basketball. So I believe that in one instance he was beginning to boycott Sony and the music industry and becoming independent here, and I believe um, this was like seven years ago, eight years ago this um, Wall Street interview. And if you look at the timeline, it's amazing that he was out there just doing for himself. And he was letting people know subliminally, I'm being taken down here, but I'm coming back. I'm coming back strong. I'm coming back strong. And then now the Me Too movement now the Jim Dare God is following him and stalking him. Now, you know, muting him on the radio stations and different things like that. Just making it very, very difficult for him just to make, just to do what he was born to do. Simply amazing music industry. You know, uh, somebody going to make some moves and somebody's going to make some changes, but the artist has to come together because that's their music. That's their livelihood. Right. Um, and the phenomenon of the mixtape was something that was entirely different where it, it, it kind of put gave people a lot of exposure on the underground. But is that something that has helped or hurt you as an artist? I don't think it's hurt me. I think uh, I've done a mixtape as well, and um, it was it did tremendous. It was it was a great thing. How did in that the help you? Well, it kept me alive in the streets, and that's where it all starts. The streets get to talking about you. The buzz get out, and then it gets to the corporate, and then they're looking at the streets now. They're looking at what's going to corporate offices and looking at what's going on in the streets and what's hot in the streets. So if you stay hot in the streets, you pretty much can stay uh, afloat. And that right there makes me think that he genuinely. R. Kelly genuinely was about to boycott, go straight independent, which he should have done from the very beginning because he had the power. He just didn't have the connections. But eventually in the streets, like he said, if he was to go back and rewind it all the way back to 1990s, he would have been able to still do what he would have done with nobody controlling, you know, anything, any type of royalties. Um... And then I don't believe that this whole Me Too movement and this whole docu-series would have even excelled to this level. I believe it has something to do with the pandemic because of the fact that, you know, years later, we were going to be in isolation. So we weren't going to be able to have the big, big uh, um, concerts, sold out concerts. So they weren't going to make their money that way. So they wanted to mute because if you mute, mute, it's going to be easier that you, that R. Kelly does not make his money and the music industry can move on to its new 
piracy, as they say, um, and streaming platforms. So they were going in, they were going through the transition of change, te technological change with R. Kelly. And he was asking about his rights for what he had already done in 30 years so he could retire and go on and do his own thing. It was a big collaborative mess. So what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this issue? I do want to bring up the history of another point of view. And I want to really, really get deeper into the whole industry. So I'm working on that now and I will probably be on in a couple days. But I thank you so much for liking, joining, commenting, subscribing to this channel. And if you have any ideas, um, please put them out there because I, I really and truly feel that this platform is for the appeal process with Robert Sylvester Kelly. And I do believe that these tie into the process of the appeal because it benefited the whole concept of the, the case itself. And that's what brought Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly down. And we are not trying to keep them, him there. We're trying to build him up. And so with any amount of information that we can share with each other to get a true vibe and a true understanding of what really happened to, you know, his music career and how we can use our intellectual abilities to push out there so we can bring him back to where he can be who he is supposed to be on this planet. Thank you so much. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.